Welcome to another episode of Jim's Summer Garden. Okay, so as you can see, these are the um, petrage kale plants, and they're more than big enough to plant out now. Um, I've had them outside for um, about, well, the best part of um, two weeks now. Um, so they've hardened off and everything, so they're all ready to go out, so I'll, I'll put them in the ground now. So when you're putting the kale plants in, what you need to do is put some of these um, posts in. Now, these come from uh, Black Country Pins, and these are just the pins that are used on... Um, sort of roadside works and stuff like that and you can buy these they work out at about a pound each or something like that and it's something that you buy once and it lasts you for life because they'll never sort of rot away or anything like that but you need something reasonably substantial and these are in the ground about 18 inches so these will support the the plants well because they do get a bit top heavy when the when they've uh, when they grow into the top of here but uh, so that's all the ground ready obviously i've put coffee in and i've also put um um blood fish and bone meal into the ground and raked all that in um, so I'm ready to plant them. Okay so all you need to do is just in front of your post that you've put in um, and I suggest you put the post in first. Um, obviously this ground's been um, rotivated over and has um, been also walked over as well because brassicas like the ground to be firm. I've not watered these yet today so they are a little bit dry but I'm planting it about an inch or so lower than it was in the pot, just to give it that extra bit of stability. And give it a really good firming in, um, like that. And then that should get off to a good start. What you need to do, obviously, as soon as you've got them in, because the ground's a bit dry, um, it's also given a bit of water. Um, but I've, plant, I've basically buried the, obviously you get the, um, the seed leaves. So I'm, I'm burying it up to, I'm burying the seed leaves and up to the first set of leaves there, pretty much. As you can see, that's going in. That's the seed leaves buried, and that'll that'll soon grow, and uh, be out of the ground. So I've just put the last one in that you can see, and then I'll complete the rest. Okay, I'm really late putting these in, but these are some um, calendula seeds. Now, these are flowers that I grow every year. And to be honest with you, with, with calendulas, they're almost like a weed. Um, as soon as you plant them in, in the ground once, they'll, they'll sort of self-set. Um, you can save the seed off them, obviously, but they have so many flowers on them. These will be flowering most of the year. And these are the flowers that you see on the, uh, the start of every video. They're always down the front of the, uh, the plot. So these came from Wilco's. Um, 50p, you can't go wrong in any of this, almost 300 seeds. Um, now the seeds are sort of funny little, funny little things. Um, they kind of look like that. Um, they look, I don't know, almost like a kind of worm. And all I'm going to do in, in here, I've, I've just gently put the compost in these modules. Uh, and I'm just going to drop uh, a couple of seeds uh, in each one of the modules. Uh, you don't need to uh, be too fussy with these. Um, now these are fantastic flowers to grow anywhere really because they'll they'll keep on flowering. If you deadhead these, they'll they'll keep on flowering all through, uh, pretty much all through the summer. They'll they'll flower for six months or more, um, as long as you keep them watered. Uh, but they are quite hardy little plants, and uh, I don't think any allotment should be without some calanders at somewhere. They are actually a marigold, uh, which is the common name for them. Obviously, there are lots of different types of marigold. Um, but uh, all you need to do is plant them in these modules. You can you can basically cast these on the ground at this time of year as well, um, and they'll they'll grow quite happily away. Um, 
but uh, I'm planting them in here because what I want to do is actually transplant these. Now these are these are slightly different colours to the, the normal ones I've got. Uh, the ones down the front are like an orangey colour. I do have some of these in there, but the majority of the ones down the front are like a sort of orange colour. Um, but you know, you don't need much of a plug because as soon as these start, as soon as they get to kind of an inch or so high, you can put these out. Um, and they'll they'll grow on. Now I've got I've actually got some of these in the front garden that are already in flower, and the plant's actually overwintered, um, and is actually in flower now. So I've got um, orange planters in the front garden. All I'm doing all I'm going to do now is basically just sprinkle some soil over the top, like that. Um, you don't need a lot of soil on top. Just a um, sort of half an inch or so is is more than enough. So just sprinkle and then obviously just push it down with your finger like that to make sure that the that the um, the seeds are in contact with the with the compost uh, like that. You don't need to be overly particular. Don't don't make the compost too firm because you want it to be reasonably loose. Then they'll they'll, they'll grow all the better. Then with some clean uh, tap water, um, just give them a, a reasonably good uh, watering like that. Now these will these will be up and out within I'd say probably about a week or so. These these are really quick growing. Uh, and within sort of two or three weeks, you'll be able to plant them outside. So, and they're great in any kind of border or anything like that. But uh, they're uh, they're just really nice plants to grow. So that's calendulus for you. Okay, so in exactly the same way as the um, the chilies, these are the um, the sweet peppers. So these are like you know like the peppers that you eat. Um, uh, you know, like the large, not the hot sort of chili peppers, but the uh, you know the ones you get from the supermarket. Now, all I'm all I'm all I'm basically doing, in exactly the same way as the uh, the normal chilies, what you want to do is try and get your finger underneath and try and catch the plant by by its actual root. So there's the there's the plant, and you can see there's the root structure coming down here. So all the what I'm basically going to do is get under these square pots, stick my finger down the middle, and then send the so there's the there's the roots basically. What you want to do is put the roots down down that hole like that. If I can just show you. So basically, put the roots down in that hole, and then get the plant to sit on the top like that. And then and then you know that the roots are in there. Now these will most certainly need to be potted up. So these are going to end up in something like um, a six-inch pot, if not in a border or something like that, because uh, then you're um, you, you know these plants are going to grow reasonably quickly. And they're going to grow quite big, so you need to treat these almost like a kind of like a tomato plant. You know, they need that kind of that much food and stuff. So I'm just putting them in like that. Just tap them in, but make sure that the tapping root goes down in the pot. Don't try and sort of um, just just put it in the top of the pot. Now, unfortunately, um, I had a mouse in the, um, the greenhouse, and um, I did originally have quite a few of these, but unfortunately, the mouse hit the top off them. Um, and it's always the problem with um, these sorts of plants that uh, they are quite prone to being uh, nibbled at by by mice. So um, out of the out of the sort of forty odd seeds I put in here, I think I've probably got about half a dozen plants. So as I say, all you need to do is is get the plant bites. You can't really quite see what I'm doing here, but I've got the there's the plant and there's the, the sort of the, not tapping root as such, but the bottom part of the roots. Make a hole with your finger in the pot like that. And then just drop it in, so you know that the roots are in the same kind of orientation. Now, if you've if you germinated your seeds in a tray like this, you don't want the plants to get much bigger than than what they are here, because basically, the roots are going to hit the bottom of the tray, and they're not going to be able to go any further. So, as soon as they get to kind of this big, it's most certainly ready to transplant. Now, I've got one more plant here, um, and obviously, what you want to try and do is disturb the roots the least amount as you can. Um, that's quite a small one. Um, I've got uh, I've got three more plants here. These are actually weeds. You can tell that they're, they're they're a different plant. Now, as you can see, the mice have eaten the leaves off this, but these these should recover. Um, so what I'm going to do is just get this one here, which is um, which has not been not been novel like that. So I've got six six good plants there. Um, that are okay. Now I've got these last two here. I'm not going to leave these in the tray. What I'm going to actually do is pot these up as well um, in exactly the same way and hopefully these will actually recover um, and uh, you know sort of go on to um, you know actually produce the plants. I should end up with eight but 
it's debatable if these are going to um, actually go full term or not. We'll just have to see. But this one, as you can see, that was eaten off, um, and it's thrown out two new leaves. Um, this one here was eaten off, and it's now just starting to grow some new. So even if it's even if it's eaten off by a mouse, um, you know they, you know these plants should should recover. Things like um, um, sunflowers, as you can see here, they're less likely to recover. But um, things like these plants should recover. So I'll just plant these last um, two up, and that's the sweet peppers potted up. But as I say, these will end up. Really, you want to have at least a sort of I don't know nine inch pot for the plant when it's fully grown. Um, if not bigger, you know, you could go up to sort of a 12 inch pot with these, but the more the more ground that you give them the uh, the bigger the crop you're going to get off them and you're likely to get, I don't know, maybe if they grow well, maybe half a dozen peppers off each one, so you need to think, you know, it's going to be similar to a tomato plant, you know, you need to have plenty of good um, uh, compost under there to give it lots of fertile soil to grow through. Okay, so I'm just going to put these um, flower sprouts in. Now, flower sprouts are, well, as it, as it sort of entails in the name, really, they're, they're, they're like a sprout plant, but rather than getting sprouts on the side, you get kind of little, little teeny cabbages, uh, which are kind of, I don't know, about, uh, they're typically purple, and they're normally kind of, you know, you know, sort of kind of that big, but, you know, about the size of your hand. Um, and what you get is, just like in sprouts, what you get is uh, lots of them forming up the, up the side of the, um, the central um, shoot. Now the good thing about this is, um, you know, you don't have to eat them all in one go. What you can do is pull them off like sprouts as you're going up. Uh, now these plants don't need too much room. Um, I would say what you need to do is plant them around, uh, I would say about 18 inches apart. Um, and that will give them more than enough room to um, to grow and form. Obviously, this ground here, it's had um, coffee on. It's also been trodden down quite well. Um, here's the coffee here. Look, um, that will add nitrogen to the soil. Um, and what you need to do is get the uh, uh, get the ground nice and firm, um, and then um, it'll help the the, uh, the flower sprouts to. Uh, basically to support themselves. Now, rather than putting these in diagonal again, what I'm going to do is do them basically off each other because I'm only going to get a second row in here. Um, so I'm going to have probably about eight plants here and I'll put eight plants in um, just where I'm standing here. Um, and that'll do me. But uh, again, plant them about the same side, if not slightly deeper than we were in the pot. Nice and firm, like that. And. Uh, so that was the other thing. In this ground I've got um, blood fish and bone meal and uh, coffee. Um, as soon as you've done that, you may well need to support these when they get a bit bigger. Uh, you don't need anything too substantial, um, just a bamboo cane will, will help them to, to um, slow the prod. But uh, what is important is you keep them keep them watered over the past, uh, you know, over the next um, few weeks as they're establishing themselves. So uh, you may well need to water them every night if the weather gets too dry or you know just feel the ground if the ground's feeling dry give them a bit of water and then they'll get off to a good start okay so that's them in now so all i need to do is just give them a good watering as i say what you need to do is probably put a bamboo cane in there uh, which is i don't know maybe um, a four foot bamboo cane so it's sticking three foot above the ground um, that should be enough to support them i don't think you need to go to the lens of putting steel posts in like this. But obviously if you've got you know something as substantial as that, what you could do is put that in and then just give them a little bit of support as they get bigger. Okay, just to quickly take you around the plot. Um, I've got the um, the kale and everything hardening off outside now, and I've also brought out the hydrangeas just to start to harden them off a little bit and also to give you some room in the greenhouse to get all the beans and bits and bobs in. Now the asparagus is still coming up but I've stopped cutting it now because what I want to do is, uh, because this section here was new if you remember, uh, what I want to do is get the strength, I don't want to take too much strength out of the plant so I'll let that grow now, uh, but what I do need to do is put some, now I've finished picking it, what I do need to do is put some poles in here and put a bit of fence 
round to stop it from sort of falling all over the um, the paths. The the raspberries I really do need to finish cutting the middle bit and tying them in, but uh, that's what the raspberries look like at the moment. The strawberries have been uh, completely put in, but the unfortunately I've got uh, um, the the cloth's lifting up a little bit, so I, I, I have to keep going along and sort of pushing it back down and pulling the plants, you, you know, the, the leaves and that out. But um, all the strawberries are in. Now, um, obviously these ones are in, in flower here as well. So uh, I'm not going to get many strawberries this year, but at least I've got them shifted and uh, there's no weed and such there. Um, the, the trees are carrying on growing. I've got some, um, as you can see, I've got some plums. Um, forming on there. Um, I've got some cherries forming on the uh, the middle tree. I'll just quickly show you. Um, so here are the here are the plums forming here. So this is really the first time this uh, this tree's fruited. Now, if if all of these come to fruition or not, I'm not quite sure. But as you can see, there's plenty of plenty of um, pears. Sorry, this is a pear tree. Um, there's you know there's plenty of pears actually forming on there. Um, this is the cherry tree, and as you can see, there's all the flowers are pollinated um, as you can see there's plenty of cherries coming so all being well the birds are eating this year but what I might do is um, I'm going to come up with a bit of a structure which is going to sit on on top of here so I can put a bit of net over um, I'm not going to completely cover it with net but it's just enough to frighten the uh, the birds off these are the justabries uh, now justabries are a kind of hybrid between a, um, a raspberry and a blackberry so they're kind of dark sorry raspberry gooseberry and a, and a blackberry so these are kind of a dark gooseberry they're only small um, but they, uh, they are quite nice for, particularly for making jam um, they're really nice this is the apple tree um, and as you can see that it's still in blossom but uh, but anyway that all being well um, we'll have plenty of fruit off the Espalli trees and bushes this year as you can see there's absolutely laden with fruit um, I'm just waiting for that to grow a little bit more so I can tie that in at the top um, but uh, I'll be continuing to train them but all of these side shoots at the moment I'm leaving them um, and what I'll be doing is cutting these back um, in the next few weeks just to just to train them a little bit better um, than they are but at the moment I'm just letting it grow to get some strength into the plant before I start cutting it back again but uh, anyway that's the the spally trees and bushes. Now the potatoes are starting to come through as you can see these are the um, these are the, the purple ones uh, purple majestic so that there's about half a row of purple majestic in there. These, these potatoes here are the um, Maris Piper and what I've done today is hoe them all up again because we've had lots of little weeds coming up between the, uh, the rows so all I've done is just hoed it all up again what that does is it disturbs the surface of the ground and just basically stops the weeds from growing. Before the potatoes come, it's well worth you doing this, particularly if it's not going to rain. Um, you know, it is quite dry today, and, we're, and we've been forecast dry weather next week. So uh, by hoeing them up now, what it'll do is it'll disturb the roots, and then um, in the absence of water, basically the the uh, the, the weeds will die. And, uh, and then you know when the potatoes come through, you know, because as soon as the potato top grow, you really struggle to um, you know to get between them without damaging them and um, you know get the weeds out so it's before the potatoes come through and start to grow um, you know particularly big it's well worth you going in now whilst the weeds are really small and weeding it and then obviously you've got less to fight with later on uh, these are the um, these are the onions so uh, as you can see they're all starting to come through if you can see but there's lots of onions coming through with, along with the weeds the, uh, my uh, parsnips haven't come through yet so I've just left the plastic on there um, just to um, you know, try to keep the ground a bit warmer to encourage them to come through. Uh, these are the other onions here, as you can see. There's onions coming through. Uh, right in here, um, I've made a I've made a modification here. I've put a spring on there so it uh, so it keeps it locked. But this is the this is the first tunnel. I've put in all of the um, the broccoli as you as you saw in an early clip, um, and also I've put um, some of the um, spinach in um, along here. I need to put some more and obviously I need to fill in the rest of that row there. So I'm going to have three three sort of mini rows on either side so there'll be some more here. So I'll, I've not put this side in yet because I'm going to put the uh, the kale in at the back. So what I'm going to do is hoe all this hoe all this up and get these potatoes out um, and the, the weed and then sort of put some more coffee and uh, 
bloodfish and bone meal on there. Then I'll be able to put the uh, the um, Scottish and the Petrage kale in there, which is hardening off. Um, these were the these were the two uh, Petrage kale that I was hoping to get seed off. But unfortunately, as you can see, the um, the seed pods have not really formed with anything in. So. Sadly, I've not got any seed to come off there, so I'll, I'll, I'll try again at the end of this year uh, to see if I can get some more seed um, off the ones that I'm growing this year. But uh, you see that spring there, that just keeps, the, keeps that shut because I've found that this tends to blow open sometimes. Uh, we've been picking loads of rhubarb, as you can see there, the leaves off there. Um, the rhubarbs, um, I've had quite a lot out so far and uh, there's still some more to, uh, to pull. But um, the one I'd, bit of advice I'd say about rhubarb is d only pick about two-thirds, between a third and two-thirds of what you've got. No more than two-thirds because what you're going to do is weaken the plant. And if you want, you know, good-sized rhubarb um, like I've got, I mean, that, that piece there, look, you can see that, you know, it's a good-sized piece of rhubarb. Um, if you want it to stay like that, um, the two bits of advice I can give you is don't move it and don't overpick it. People always tend to overpick rhubarb. And, uh, you know, you need to realise that, you know, you've got to let the plant um, get nutrients and, you know, and, and, and have the leaves on it for photosynthesis and stuff for, you know, you know the plant to, um, to, you know, really flourish. So um, don't overpick rhubarb. That's, that's the best bit of advice I can give you. Um, aim to pick about a half of it or slightly half of it. But, but most certainly don't, don't, um, don't pick any more than two thirds of what's on each of the plants. Um, and I would suggest that, because uh, rhubarb comes twice, it'll come this time, and it'll all die down a little bit, and then towards sort of September, August, September time, it'll then come again. So, you know, you, you, know, you do get lot, uh, two lots of opportunities to pick at it anyway. But um, don't, don't overpick rhubarb, which is the mistake most people make. Right, and in this tunnel here, this is, this is getting a bit jungle-like in here now, because uh, uh, this is the Scottish cane, as you can see. It's, it's actually filled the... Uh, filled the um, the tunnel so what I'm hoping for is some seed off this and you can see the little seed pods are forming here um, I'm in two minds actually to leave the door open on this to let insects in to, um, to actually pollinate it a bit better but as you can see it's uh, it's absolutely filled the uh, the tunnel but I'm hoping for some seed the the spinach here as you can see I've been pulling the, the seed heads off but it's it's determined to run to seed now um, so um, you know, I will keep on picking this and keep pulling the heads off. But um, four days ago, there was no seed heads on this at all, and as you can see now, there's one pretty much on every plant. So it soon it soon throws up another. Um, if I just fight my way through here, um, it soon throws um, it soon throws more um, seed heads up. But um, this is the um, the kale all the way to the end, um, and as you can see, all the plants are kind of fallen over. Um, I really should have staked this a bit better than I did. But uh, anyway, that's the Petrage kale. Sorry, the Scottish kale. I'm um, in here. But uh, it's uh, it literally is like a jungle in here now. As you can see, it's uh, absolutely filled the uh, the tunnel with uh, beautiful yellow flowers. They are they are very pretty. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the first tunnel, second tunnel, sorry. Now around the front, we've got all of the. Uh, I have put some weed killer up up the uh, the path here, just to not on the where we grow stuff, but just on the path, just to sort of kill it all off and down here, uh, just to tidy it up a bit. Uh, this is these are the calendulas, which are basically self-set, um, so they'll be growing along here. So uh, they need a bit of water. Uh, they're the bean sticks that we put in today. I don't know if you saw them on an early clip, but these will be coming up shortly. Uh, and all I've done is just rake the ground and put all the uh, the bean sticks in there. Um, it's the masher in at the back there. Um, and then there'll be a path through here. Um, so gourds on that side, uh, beans here. So all round, sort of all in there and all round there will be the gourds. So what I'll do is plant them along the back and along the side of the rhubarb there and then round here. And then I'll have like a path up the middle so I can get to them and water them. Um, so the beans will be going out in about three weeks' time, all being well. Um, obviously there'll be more beans up here. Uh, so this is the, the other side of the potatoes that have been hoed up today. Um, but you can see the, 
The strawberries haven't done particularly well, to be honest with you, but um, they will survive, I'm sure. Um, I've got some more in the greenhouse that are, that are just coming through. Now, this piece of ground here, I've been digging it, um, digging it all over and uh, getting all the weed out in the bindweed. You can see there's bits of bindweed here going through here as well, so I'm, I'm getting it all out. But believe it or not, what I've dug there so far just that bit there, I've actually filled a wheelbarrow full of um, bindweed and I'm sure there's more in there um, so all, all I can keep doing is just keep digging it but uh, as soon as I've got it dug over again finish digging this bit here and then I'll, I'll dig it all over again just to make sure it's all broken up and I've got as much bindweed out as I can um, the climbing beans are going to go here and uh, I'm not quite sure I'm going to put here but there'll be something else here as well uh, but that's what the that's what the plot looks like obviously at the back here we've got the comfrey flowering quite nicely um, mint's doing really well and the uh, the lemon balm and uh, we've got the um, oregano growing in here Bean, uh, the uh, the spearmint growing through this potty where I normally put the gourds and we've got some these thyme plants what I'm going to do with these is um, put them in some larger pots um, and sit the pots in there um, there's, there's, there's two more here um, in pots so I'm going to pot them up and then put them at the front so I can sort of get to them uh, the rosemary's um, been in flower now since January and so that's done really well um, and I've, I've got a camellia bush in the uh, in the uh, the garden as well and that's been in flower since January and it's still got flowers on it now in May so uh, the the weather's been really good this year for plants so far but uh, the the oregano I'm not quite sure why it's growing all right here where it's sticking out of the um, where it's sticking out of the uh, the wall but this this bit at the back here it just doesn't want to just doesn't want to grow but uh, anyway that's what the that's what the main plot looks like uh, I think I've already done enough updates of the greenhouse but uh, um, that's basically what the greenhouse looks like I'm not going to go into detail because it's pretty much as it was um, on the last update but that's what the plot looks like on the um, 6th of May So, I hope this episode is of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you, and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Up and Garden.